Hi, so welcome to the K-Native Eventing Enablement. Um, we've already looked at, at uh, K-Native Serving, um, which uh, serving basically allows us to dynamic, dynamically scale a pod based on HTTP traffic load. Um, eventing introduces the ability to scale up your K-Native services from sources other than HTTP. So for example, you could scale it up based on messages, messages hitting um, a Kafka topic, could be um, Kubernetes events. It could be um, an event emitted from you know another container. So there's there's a range of different types of K-native sources. Um, we're going to introduce two two terms: um, syncs and eventing sources. So a sync is an event receiving service. So once we have a K-native service deployed, we can use that as a sync. Um, syncs can also be things like channels and brokers and so on, and we'll, we'll get to those later in the, in the enablement. Um, we're also going to talk about eventing sources. So eventing sources are responsible for connecting to and retrieving events from a system. So for, again, for example, a, a Kafka eventing source will connect to a Kafka topic and it's responsible for you know, uh, monitoring that topic for messages. And then based on that message, sending um, an event to whatever sync is, is defined. Um, similarly, you know, um, an, uh, an eventing source could be a container. It could be, you know, Kubernetes uh, API events. Um, it could be a simple ping source, which allows you just to do it to a cron, uh, cron schedule, that type of thing. So, so we're going to go through the, the examples of different uh, K-native uh, eventing sources. And we're then going to look at some usage patterns such as source sync, channels and subscriptions, and brokers and triggers. Um, source to sync is the simplest way to get started with Knative eventing. It's effectively a Knative service which will act as the sync. The source will, will send the events directly to that Knative service. If you want something a bit more robust and production grade, you're going to want to use something like channels. Your channel can then be backed by uh, a message store like Kafka, and your services will then subscribe to the channel, and you can have multiple services subscribing to a different channel, and you've got persistence and so on. And if you want to take that a step further, then you can look at brokers and triggers, which allows you to apply some level of filtering on the broker at the broker level. So there's you know some of the logic and so on can be taken care of at that stage. But again, it's all going back by by uh, by Kafka for persistence. So we're going to kick off, we're going to install the Strimsy operator and we're going to install the, the Knative uh, Apache Kafka operator. I'm going to deploy those on this cluster using this operator subscriptions file here. So if we look at this operator subscriptions, you can see here what we're going to apply. Um, it's just these subscriptions to the, to the cluster. So let me just deploy that and we will let that spin up uh, and take us a few minutes. All right, so that's the operators deployed, and we should be able to see that in our uh, cluster now. If I just look at the operators and the install operators, we should see those coming up. Just have a look at the default project. There we go. So they're, they're starting to, to appear now. There we go. Uh, they're all installing and should be, should be deployed pretty quickly. So once that's done, we're going to go ahead and we're going to install Knative Serving and we're going to install Knative Eventing. All right, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to set up the Knative Serving project. So I'm just going to do, um, let's create a new project and I'm going to deploy Knative Serving. So in order to, in order to deploy Knative Serving, I just run this simple uh, YAML here, which uh, create a Knative serving instance. So let me just deploy that. Let's give that a second. And once that is uh, deployed, we should then see some pods some part spinning up. So let's have a look. Um, All right, so just give those a few seconds. They can take a few seconds to start up. We might get, we might get some restarts and so on. Um, 
around those as well. So while that is happening, I'm going to do the same for the Knative eventing. So and again, let's just deploy the Knative eventing uh, parts and so on. Right, so same thing. Um, just see those spinning up now in a second. It sometimes take a, a second or so to start up. There we go. There's the Knative eventing ones. So let's have a look at the Knative serving ones. They should be all in the money now. There you go. So that's so we've got Knative serving um, running and Knative eventing should be in progress. So creating, cool. All right. So that's that. Um, now we can go through and we can start doing some of these examples. So I'm gonna I'm gonna run all the examples in the Knative test uh, project. So we'll just create that and we're gonna start off. So. I guess the, the key thing we're going to do here is we're going to deploy a simple Knative service. Um, and we're going to use this then throughout the exercises as the service is just going to basically you know, respond to the events and it's just going to simply uh, log out the events for us. Um, so one of the key things about, about this service is we are using the cloud events module, uh, which is from the CNCF. This is the Node.js uh, Cloud Events NPM module. And in this case, we're just using the receiver um, object from that. And we are then basically creating a, a cloud event uh, compatible object from whatever is passed in um, as the, you know, the, the body and the headers and so on of the message. So it's pretty straightforward. Um, the, uh, the, the serving, the the service which we're running will need to listen on port 8080 and it will need to accept a post to the to the route of the application. So you can see here we're listening on port 8080. That's the default uh, for Knative serving um, events, event applications and it should accept a post. So in order to use this, I'm going to build it. Um, I'm going to trigger a new build with the, uh, the Node.js S2I builder. And I'm just pointing towards this context here, which is samples Knative service, which is where I am at the moment. So, so we'll just kick that off. That's going to take a minute or so to run. All right. And now that that should be running, let us just have a look. Sometimes it takes a second to start up. Let's just have a look at the pods. Yeah, it's still starting. So, hmm, it's taking its time. There we go. Just took a, just took a few seconds just to pull that image down for the, the build image down onto the, onto the node. So we'll give that um, a few minutes. So once that's built, next thing we're going to do is we're just going to delete the, the build, the completed build part, and we will then deploy this as a Knative service. So in order to do that, I'm going to uh, run this YAML here, this uh, event has been Node.js. If we look at that, uh, this is simple stuff at this point. We've, we've covered this previously. This is just deploying a Knative service, and that is the image that we're going to use for our Knative service, and we're going to call it Event Display Node.js. And once that is done, we should then be able to um, just do a simple curl command to effectively create a cloud event, you know, kind of mimic a cloud event um, object and send that into the uh, into the Knative service. All right, there we go. Just gonna push the image now. There we go, that's done. Okay. So as I said, we're gonna delete the build part. 
and we're now going to apply the YAML to create the Knative service. That should be done. And that will spin up an instance of that service straight away. Um, so let us just wait for that to come up. Um, if we just have a look at the pods. There's our Knative service. It'll pull down that image and it will deploy that. If we just look at the logs on that, we should see how it's doing. Still creating. There we go. So there's a, a simple Node.js application listening on port 8080. If I do this curl command, it should hit that, um, that route and will send a sample cloud event to it. So let's just, let's just run that. We should, yeah, so we've got event accepted, which is the response we will get from our Node.js app. And if I look at the logs again, uh, let me just copy that. So there, there, there is the output from the log. So we can see that we received a cloud event object, type curl demo, and that, there's the data. So, so we have our Knative service running, and now we can start to do some sample Knative events, uh, eventing examples. So the first one we're going to look at is the ping source. So ping source is the simplest of them, of them all. Um, effectively, what we can do here is we, we can we can define a schedule. In this case, I'm, I'm saying every two minutes, we're going to send this JSON uh, data to this sync, which is this, um, this Node.js application that we just deployed. So in order to deploy that, I'm going to deploy this YAML here, this eventing hello source YAML, uh, which is effectively, as, as we see here, Again, you know, the, type, the kind is ping source, name is eventing hello ping source, there's a schedule and so on. This is the key thing though, again, it, this is the sync. So this is the, the Knative service that we're going to call, uh, that we, you know, we're going to emit this event to. This could also be a channel, it could also be a broker. Uh, for these examples, I'm just going to keep it simple. So, all right, so let us deploy that and we'll see what happens. And let's have a look at our watch our pods just to see what's going on. So we have no pods running at the moment. So what, what has happened now is our Knative service has been, you know, it, it was run when, when we initially deployed it. Uh, we sent a call to it and it stopped receiving any traffic. So it's been shut down by the, by the Knative serving um, application. So what's going to happen is the eventing hello uh, ping source will every two minutes it's going to send this data to that event display node.js server so we should see this spinning up now in a few seconds and when it does if we look at the logs on it there it is uh, we should see uh, this this J uh, json data being sent to it so let's have a look at the logs here all right um that's the logs of our service and there we go there's the data and it's come from Knative sources ping, which is you know the, the type of Knative source that we, we created, and there's the data. So, um, so that's a very simple example. It's just it's just a really simple way of uh, you know demonstrating um, you know different ways of, of spinning up Knative services. So let us let us delete this ping source, and we will then go on and have a look at the container source. So let's just um, delete that. All right, so the container source, this is where it kind of gets a bit more interesting. Um, so a container source example, this allows you to effectively emit a, a, an event to a Knative service or a channel, you know, any sync, um, again, from your container. So you could, you could deploy a you know, container using any image you want, and you could basically, you know, have you within the code in that, in that, uh, in that image, when you want to send an event, you just submit to um, to this URL. And what's happening here is um, you can see here that we're we're setting our, our URL for our emitter as the k underscore sync environment variable. So the container source uh, when we deploy this container source example, we deploy it using this container source kind. This will 
in inject this k underscore sync uh, environment variable into the pod when we deploy it, when it's deployed. So all we need to do then as a developer is know that we're going to get this k underscore sync environment variable, and that's where we're going to admit our events to. All right. So so again, I'm just using a simple Node.js example here. It could be any language, um, and there are um, CNCF SDKs for a range of different languages. I'm using the Node.js one here again to you know to to create this emitter object, which I can then use to just simply emit my event, which I'm doing down here. And again, just for, for simplicity's sake, I am setting up a, a cron schedule again, just to do this every two minutes, rather than trying to do some convoluted way of, of triggering these events. So, all right, so let us deploy our uh, container source example. Uh, first, oh, first thing I need to do is build my, my container source image. So um, I push that to an image stream. So let us just do that. And when that's finished, we will again we'll, we'll we will delete our our uh, completed uh, part. So let's just watch that. Okay, so that's running. A little bit quicker this time because we had that Node.js build image pull down from previously. So we will um, just look at the logs and that. All right, there you go, it's nearly finished. And once that is done, I will delete the completed job. And then I'll, I'll deploy this container source. All right, nearly done. Let's just push the image up. There we go. There's the image up. Push successful. And then let's just delete our completed job. And I'm going to deploy our container source. So container source, um, you can see here, with, this is the YAML work we're deploying. We're going to call it test container source. This is the image that we've just built. Um, it's got, the container will be called container source. Okay, so there's no reference to this k underscore sync environment variable here. That's, that's injected automatically when this is deployed. And again, this is going to be the sync. We're using the same uh, Knative service event display Node.js as our sync, which will which will um, have the event submitted to. So to deploy that, let us just uh, run this. And then if we do OC get sources, um, should see. Uh, so also, yeah, so there's two of them uh, deployed here. So actually what, what happens here is you, you get a sync binding and a container source. So it actually, um, and I, I'm going to explain sync bindings uh, when we get to the next example. So in, when you deploy a container source, you will actually get two sources, uh, a sync binding and a container source. The key, the key thing here is that they, they have uh, true under the ready column um, and the sync is set up correctly here. This is the sync of our Knative service that we're going to emit our events to. So if you have any issues, if you don't see uh, true under the ready uh, column here, you can do OC describe, container source, the name of the source, and you will see the events and get some idea of, of what happened. Um, now, let me just have a look and see. Um, we should have our pod running. There's our container source pod. So that's, um, that is now emitting. Uh, an event every two minutes. Um, so let us just to um, go into the term into the shell on that pod, and let's just to um, have a look at the environment variable. So we should see there we go. There's the the k underscore sync environment variable. So that is available to our application uh, to emit events to. So let's just. Um, There we go. Yeah. So it is, you know, it's been a minute or so. So it has now emitted an event. And as a result, our event display Node.js service has uh, been spun up. So let us have a look at the logs on that. Uh, 
there we go it's container event and there's the data uh, that was sent to it all right so yeah so pretty simple uh, but you can imagine you know you, you can very easily now from any uh, any application you can deploy uh, as a container on on, uh, on OpenShift you can emit events to you know whatever uh, whatever uh, Knative service or channel or whatever you have defined as your sync so it's pretty it's pretty simple um, so I'm just going to delete that excuse me and then we'll have a look at the uh, the sync binding example um, yes yeah, so sync binding is it's very similar really uh, sync binding though uh, you apply the sync binding um, you apply the sync binding to the parent of the pod that's going to be, be deployed so in other in other words in this example I'm going to apply sync binding to um, to a deployment object um, so that's my deployment so so this is the sync binding. So first of all, I'm gonna I'm gonna just create a deployment object, and I'm gonna define this is the image that I'm gonna deploy, and I've got you know it's got a label of sync binding. Okay, so that's just a normal Kubernetes deployment object. My sync binding then will match anything of kind deployment that has got a label app sync binding, and it will then uh, redeploy that uh, that pod, and it will inject the the k underscore sync environment variable into that pod but again the key thing is it's the it's the parent of the pod that we're deploying uh, that, that we're applying this to um, so you can you can apply sync binding to I think pretty much anything which will create a pod such as you know a stateful set uh, a deployment you know whatever um, whatever you want to do that, that, that creates a pod so so let us deploy our deployment um, first of all um, Oh, actually, we're going to do the sync binding object first. Let's just create that. And let's just do OC get sources. So there's our sync binding source, and it is again, it's, it's got the, the correct sync, which is our um, a key native service and it's ready. So what will happen now as soon as I uh, deploy this deployment YAML this sync binding uh, source will detect that based on the label and it will deploy an, another instance of it with the correct uh, environment variable injected. So let us just give that a go. There's our deployment and if we just have a look at the lot of the pods there there we go. So it's, there's actually two. So there's the that one's terminating because it's uh, it, it's been redeployed by our sync binding. So there's the one which has been deployed correctly uh, with the correct part and so on. So if we have a look at that, um, same as previous, it's effectively a container. If I look, if I just uh, look at the environment variables in there, we should see there's the k underscore sync environment variable. So it's effectively the same end result as, as when we use the container source, but as I said, in this in this case, we've applied the the key native source to uh, the, you know the, to the deployment object. So um, so set end result should be the same. We should see our there's our event display application again because it, it, there's a cron job hitting that every two minutes, and if we look at the the logs on that. Um, There we go. So same thing. Um, yeah. So that's uh, that is our um, our uh, sync binding example. All right. So I'm going to delete those. All right. And then we will go on and we will have a look at the uh, the, King, the Kafka event source example. So 